Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, and all the links, my courses, Patreon, etc., etc. So fun. All right, let's, well, let's get in there. This is just a very simple lesson. This is just a gentle reminder that I know that we chase the very interesting and advanced concept of playing to changes. Yes, very cool, but we don't have to. Not necessarily. Anyway, let's, we'll, we'll learn the solo, and as we go through little, little, little quote-unquote wisdoms I might be able to uh, point to. This is just a simple, you know, E... It's like, okay, there's a simple, like, two-chord jam. What would Mike Campbell do with this? So let's talk about, well, here, E minor pentatonic. You know, classic, I know that we, we want to avoid the box. We're tired of the box. I want to do more fancy things cool, but I don't think we should like think of the box as something to move beyond. To me, it's something that is like essential to like my core ability to execute anything on this instrument. So here's the opening lick. I'm not going to call out the frets. You can see what I'm doing. If you don't know that lick, there you go. Two to four to three. That's just using the G up to A. So the first principle, or actually the whole principle about what we're doing here today is I just came up with this today. C-A-R-R, car playing, which means when I'm thinking about improvising or making up a solo, I'm thinking about composition, not competition. I'm thinking about articulation, which that actually includes everything. That includes slow vibrato, that includes where my hand is, that includes my tone choices that I'm making today, and, and sliding and things like that. And then rhythm and repetition is so essential. I think that's one of the biggest things I notice folks struggling with with their improv is like uh, wanting to go too fast, being insecure or ashamed about not being able to play fast. Fuck that shit. A good melody is a good melody is a good melody. That's, the, that's I guess, the overall ethos of today. Let's continue now after I drew your attention in with some well-placed expletives. Speaking of well-placed expletives, here's some skronk. Eight and six, which is really, um, I'm seeing the flat five of the key. You know, the devil's interval. And then, you know, seeing this sixth fret note here on, on the G string, which is a C sharp. Because really it was me thinking about doing a chromatic slide into that portion of the E minor pentatonic scale that is diagonal. I'm going to throw this on the tab as a bonus. That's a cool scale. And then I had a, a, another little, you know, moment of, of inspiration and wasn't the greatest moment of inspiration, but that's another thing about improv. You just go with what you got. That was it. I purposely, for this lesson, I prepped maybe 15, 20 minutes to make up this solo because I wanted to show you pretty, pretty, you know, transparently, eh, here's a solo. Now, 
Now you see what I did there? I kept doing the same motif. And yeah, I'm kind of hitting a muted E string in between. You don't have to. Slow vibrato on that seven there. Detour into vibrato, I'm gonna have to do another lesson on this. I really don't think that's cool. Also, I see, you know, sometimes us flashy YouTube guitar players, we do a really like, wide and fast vibrato. Not really good, you know, advice. I think the coolest vibrato is a slow rotational uh, vibrato. SRV vibrato. Boy, I'm full of those, uh, what do they call those mnemonic devices today? Again, it's a rotation from the wrist. It's not from the fingers like this, and it's not cello vibrato, which I don't know why people do that. It just ends up, it's a lot of work for not a lot of payoff. So anyway. Captain Eric's opinion on that is slow vibrato. And then, you know, the, the next little uh, brain fart I had was switch over to major pentatonic for a second. So that's actually now visualizing. I'll throw this on, on the tab as well. Major pentatonic. Because, yeah, you can do that, too. You can cross over and add notes left and right, front and back. You know where that came from. I was thinking about a great solo that doesn't play to changes, but is well phrased. Leslie, uh, Leslie West on Mississippi Queen. Of course, he's way up there. There's a, okay, well, detour into other great little solos that don't play to changes. Mike Campbell on a breakdown. And I mean, yeah, I reference Mike Campbell a lot because he's a great example of a guitar player playing for the song. That's, that's, you know, to me, that's the coolest. <laughs> And, oh wait, I didn't finish out my thought. So the last thought I had. But then I switched back to minor pentatonic. Notice though, same concept, same little motif. Yeah, vibrato with a bend is difficult. Thumb mm. over the top. Notice we got contact here. I have a callus on this part of my hand from, from bending and guitar. This is This is bulletproof right there. And then up to the, you know, the 12 fret box. That's the thing. That's the thing. So to review, composition, not competition, articulation, rhythm, and repetition. Like, yes, playing to changes is very cool. Um, it's also very, very difficult. I think I notice students come to me to, to work on that, and here's my, my first take on, on playing the changes, is actually way more useful for rhythm guitar parts than it is for lead guitar parts. Of course, if you're in a very advanced uh, band or there's weird chords coming at you that aren't from the key, that's when it's time to play the changes. But if the song is staying in one key, composition is the first priority, is something that is a nice memorable melody because I think we freeze and you know the I think 100% of people watching YouTube videos will say I am sick of the pentatonic box and my counterpoint to that is I'm not Speaking of pentatonics, go to my website to purchase my courses, book lessons, or support me on Patreon. That's how I make my living.
Thank you so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do, even if it's just clicking like and subscribe. It keeps me in business with the algorithm. Relevancy, as Bill and Ted would say. Be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza.